In this video, I'm gonna explain exactly what a software engineer does so you don't have to spend all day wondering. Now, since I'm an engineer at a large tech company, this video is probably gonna reflect mostly what engineers at large tech companies do. Um, smaller tech companies or non-tech companies might have a very different and much less organized process. But before we talk about what software engineers actually do, we gotta jump into what the feature development process actually looks like. So we basically got four main steps to the process. We got researching, feature scoping, designing, and engineering. The first step to this process is figuring out what you actually need to do to make your product better. Now, for some companies, your customer will literally walk through the front door and be like, your product sucks and I'm upset. As you can imagine, that doesn't really happen at large tech companies like social media companies. In the case of large tech companies, they usually have a team of researchers that does some analysis and goes like, holy smokes, 80% of our users are over the age of 50 we're becoming lame. And then the data they gather is used to come up with solutions. Let me give you an example. Say your company is working on an app that shows people a feed of pictures of puppies, okay? So now your research team might go conduct some research, come back and say, we figured out that some people only want to be able to see small puppies, so maybe we should add some sort of filter. We also found that there's a huge untapped kitten market that we are not satisfying. So sometimes here, the engineers will add ideas that'll improve the technical infrastructure of the product without actually adding any functionality to customers. So these ideas will usually get shot down by product managers since it doesn't provide direct functionality to the customer. And that is where the stereotype of engineers and product managers always arguing comes from. Speaking of product managers, it brings us to step two of the process Process, which is feature scoping. And that is where our friend the PM, also known as the product manager, comes in. So they basically take all the research and come up with some well-defined ideas to improve the product, and then they prioritize these ideas based on what actually matters the most. Once they figure out what the most important thing is, they write a product requirement document, or PRD for short. So this document basically explains exactly what the problem is and what solution is required to solve it. So let's go back to our puppy app example. In this example, the product manager might decide that adding kittens to the app is simply much more important than filtering the puppies by size and breed. And then they would write a product requirement document explaining that there's a huge problem. Users can't see kittens. And the solution might be that there needs to be a cat feed in the application. So once they're done with this, they would send it to the UX designer. So step three of the process is the design. And here, the UX designer basically figures out exactly what the feature should look like so that users can use it easily. They then create a mock-up, which is basically a really detailed and pretty picture of how the app is gonna look. A mock-up might look something like this. I'm covering like the whole thing, dumbass. A mock-up might look something like this. As you can tell, I'm not a UX designer. So back to our puppy app example, they would probably create an actual drawing of how the toggle is gonna look to switch between feeds. Is it gonna be a button or a slider? And when you get to the cat feed, what is it actually gonna look like? Once this is done, the engineering begins, and this is what you actually came to learn about. So I like to break a software engineer's job into four segments, planning, coding, testing, and launching. Starting with planning, an engineer basically writes a document explaining the technical details behind a feature, and we call this a technical design document. So for our kitten feature, some things that might go into this document include, which database am I going to use to store all these cat photos? How am I going to deliver this data to users' phones efficiently? How will I structure this code such that it's readable and easy to change in the future? How will my automated testing ensure that nobody breaks this feature in the future? Basically you'll answer all these questions in the document. Then you'll show your team and they'll find a bunch of things that you completely overlooked and then you'll feel really dumb. So what happens is you go back, address their concerns, and you go through several cycles of this until you finally finish your technical design document. Now I'd say that planning takes roughly 20% of an engineer's time. Moving on to coding, after a plan is fully formed, you code it. Now sometimes everything will work exactly as planned, but most of the time, Nothing will work at all like planned. You might find that a technology you wanted to use is deprecated, or that it just sucks and you thought it would be good. You might find that the approach you wanted to take originally just takes way too long, so you need to change it. You might find that Stack Overflow doesn't explain your problem as well as you thought it would. Regardless, a rule of thumb in software engineering is that no matter how much time you allocate to a project, you'll always be scrambling to finish it in the end. Contrary to popular belief, I'd say that an engineer only really spends 30% of their time coding the actual feature. Another 30% of their time is spent on testing. Every software engineer hates writing tests, but the fact of the matter is we have to spend time doing it anyways. Now, while we're writing the actual product code, we write what is known as unit tests. 
Basically, these are small tests that check that very specific pieces of code are working properly. When the entire feature is complete, we write integration tests or end-to-end -end tests. These tests basically confirm that the basic functionality is functional and that the different pieces of the code integrate together properly. They will also confirm that nobody breaks this functionality in the future. Now this whole testing part of the process might actually involve fixing existing code and existing tests that you broke when you were writing your feature. When we're done testing the feature, we move on to launching the feature. Now I say that this takes 10% of an engineer's time, but in practice, I think it might take a little bit less. So essentially what happens is we show this feature to a very small number of customers, let's say 1%. So in our example, we might allow 1% of people to see the kittens and the other 99%, they're stuck with puppies. When we do this, we check whether any errors show up to those 1% of people that our test didn't catch. Once we fix all these errors and we're completely satisfied, we slowly start adding more and more people until eventually everybody can see kittens. And when everybody can see kittens, we're done launching the feature. You'll notice that these percentages only add to 90% and that's because 10% of what a software engineer does is kind of miscellaneous. This might include things like going to meetings, helping your teammates with code, playing foosball. And when you add that to the mix, that makes up 100% of what a software engineer does. There is one other thing a software engineer does, and this is perhaps the most crucial step of all of them. A software engineer always subscribes to this channel so they don't miss out future videos about software engineering. Other than that, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.